Crafting with the Crazy Hair Kids. Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm Kamari. I'm Kelly. Hi, I'm Kyle. I'm Kiara. We're the Crazy Hair Kids. We're Khalil and Keisha. We're the parents. We may pop in from time to time if you need a little help. We love music, and we love making our own musical instruments. We hope you'll love making musical instruments, too. Let's get started! Hi, everyone. It's Miss Frida again, and I'm going to help you with crafts to assist my crazy hair kids crafting club. I'm here with Kelly, Kyle, and Katie. And over here we've got Kiara, Kevin, and Kamari. And in case you need help from the parents, we have Khalil and Keisha. So if they pop up, they'll tell you where you might need a little bit of help. Today we're going to make drums. Now drums are fun. You've probably discovered any place in your house, if you find something, you can tap on just about anything. For example, look at this delicious little, whoa, frosting can that has a lid on it. It actually hasn't been opened yet, but once it's empty, you can hit on the lid like this and it makes a little drum sound, or you can find other containers that are empty, like I have this sour cream container, and it can make all kinds of cool sounds. You can use pencils, you could even use your hands. I also recommend you can use a spoon, or look at this, we even have chopsticks that make wonderful drumsticks. Clearly I don't have that much rhythm, but maybe you do. So let's get started. I'm going to, oh, the reason I have the parents here, first of all, before you start pounding on too many things, Ask mom and dad if it's okay if you use some of the things first, or you can ask their help when something's empty. I found that containers that are round, such as empty cans of food, or nice little oatmeal containers work really, really well, but you don't have to settle for just round. If you've got a cover, you can use a rectangular trash can or something like that, and you can make a drum out of that. I'm going to ask the parents to step aside for a second, but remember, I told you you can use just about any container you can find in your house. For example, if you have, make sure they don't have sharp edges. If you've got a can that has a pull open top, such as this soup can, that doesn't leave sharp edges. If you have a container of fruit, like a fruit cup, you can peel that off and there are no sharp edges. So you don't want anything that you might get cut with. So let's get started. I'm going to start today just using a regular can. What do I want to do with this can? Well, while that's kind of nice, I'm not sure everyone wants a can of tomatoes drum, so you probably may want to decorate your can. Luckily, we've got some of this crazy fun colored tape that you can put around your can and just wrap that around and around or once you get this around see how much nicer it starts to look automatically you can use your blunt end scissors and cut the tape rather than making mine one color I have different colors of tape, so I'm going to alternate some of the colors I have with mine. You may want to do the same, or I have a couple other really cool ideas for you too. I'm going to just wrap this tape around. Mine won't be terribly smooth, but you can do yours and take a little bit more time with it, and I'm sure yours will look very, very pretty when you get done, or at least very attractive. See, this no longer looks like an old can of tomatoes that it had been before. Well, that's fine. You could turn it upside down if you wanted, and oh boy, use your chopsticks or your pencils. That makes a good drum in and of itself, but today we're going to show you two different ways 
to use things to make your drum head or your drum top. One of which, maybe you've been out having food delivered or shopping somewhere where you get a brown paper bag. And if that's the case, I always suggest if you want to cut a circle, I'm going to turn it over here. Use something larger than your container there. Why, look at this. I found a food storage container. I'm going to use my food storage container and my pencil, and I'm going to draw a circle around this. This circle is much bigger than the opening on my can, as you can probably tell. That will give me a guideline on where I can cut my drum top. So I'm just going to cut. Your circle doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to stick out a little bit. But I'm going to cut all the way around my circle and make a lot of noise in the process. And when I finish cutting from this bag, as you can see, I have lots left over. Save it. You can make more tops for more drums, too, if you'd like. To do this, I'm going to set my can in the middle and just kind of pull the sides up. Excuse me, Mom. Let me ask Mom and Dad just to move aside since they've already given me permission to use these. Goodness gracious. It looks today like Kyle wants to lay down. Kyle, can you join us? Thank you. I'm going to pull the top down a little so it's a little bit tight. And then I'm going to take one or two rubber bands and I'm going to pull those around and make sure I get this to hold in place. And if you want, you can put a second rubber band. Sometimes it helps just to have a little bit more holding on. Now see, this starts already to look like a drum, doesn't it? At this point, let's see what kind of sounds I get from this drum. I think I really think I'm going to use pencils now. I think I'll use the open end. Let's see. You've got a good drum. Let's see what it sounds like. Does it sound different if I use the eraser end? Not much, but because it's hollow inside, it reverberates. You can even use your fingers. You can do this. You can tap with your hands, or you can use on any other thing you find around the house. Now, I showed you a couple other containers. For example, remember the fruit cup I said you could use? Well, I had two of those, so I used some yarn that I found around the house. I used my glue stick. I ran the glue stick around and around and around. I guess I have to unscrew this one. Some pop off. I just did my glue stick up and down like this. And then I took the yarn. I did it most of the way around. And I took my yarn and started wrapping the yarn around and around. Let me put a little bit more glue near the bottom. And you can do this. Some of you may have done things like before, like this, doing flower pots or making things for your mom for Mom's Day and Mother's Day or just making pretty stuff. So if you want, just take your time and run this around and you'll end up with your drum that size. Now what we can do now, remember that paper bag? Take something larger than the top. And you know what? I can tell you what's larger right away. Hmm. My other drum is larger. So I'm going to draw a circle around this drum so that I have a guideline I'm going to put my drum out of sight for just a moment. And I can go ahead and again cut another circle that I can use for yet another top on my drum. 
Now I've mentioned before, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It just has to be larger than the one that you're putting this on top of, the top you're using. So I'll put that aside again. I'm going to fold the edges up just a little bit so I can have an area here that the rubber band will hold on to. Just like that. I'm going to turn it over and take my rubber band. You may need help. My hands are probably larger than yours. You may need a little bit of help having someone hold your top to help you get this on. In fact, it looks like I might do a little better if I had some help. But once you get it all on there, then again, you've got a smaller drum. You can use your fingertips and have a drum there. Another thing you can use, ooh, remember this food storage container? That looks like fun. You're going to find in your kits that you have at home that we've sent along Mylar balloons. Usually you see these at your birthday or at different parties and they're filled with this helium gas that's real light and that floats up in the air. We're not going to have ours float. I'm going to have you cut yours open. If you'd like, you can leave it just the way it is, pull it around with rubber bands and see how that'll make a top. But just in case you get inspired and want to make even more drums and out of your balloon, I'm going to have you take your scissors. There's the one part that ordinarily you'd try this, tie the string to. Take your scissors, open that, and then just kind of pull the balloon apart. See how you've got the opening there? And use your scissors, just kind of follow around the outer edge of the balloon. Cut the entire circle out. It may take a minute or two to get Once this Once I get this done, remember, you don't have to fold this one as much. It's not as stiff as the paper from the paper bag. Just kind of fit that across the top of the lid. Take a couple, one or two of your larger balloons if you have them. And just stretch or ask mom and dad or someone else to help hold this. So you can get the rubber bands all the way around the top. Mine came loose, but that's okay if it comes loose. You can just kind of hold it up a little and pull the loose part down through. See like I'm doing with this one. And get it in there. And once you've got everything tucked in, just kind of give a little couple tugs around the side. That helps the top be a little tighter. Because the tighter it is, the better the sound. And once you've got it all the way there, not only is this really cool and looks really pretty, but it makes for better sounds. I'm going to use a big spoon. The good thing about the Mylar, it doesn't tear very easily. So you're able to hit a little harder and have a nice percussion orchestra going. I'm going to put this one aside. Another thing that makes a really good thing, if you happen to have an oatmeal box, you can do the same thing with the oatmeal box. You could actually leave the top on and use this as a drum. But you don't want a drum that says oatmeal. So at this point, as we've done before, you can always get construction paper. I wanted to pick a color other than purple. I used purple on one of my other projects. We're not going to use purple today. So I'm going to set that aside, use my glue stick. That just is going to be a little bit too large. So what I just did, I folded part of this over because I sort of measured and saw that this was going to be a little too large. And then I'm going to cut my construction paper along the fold. Then I'm going to use my glue stick, put plenty of glue, just making 
stripes here and there, whoops, all across the way so that we can get it nice and sticky. And once I've done that, I'm just going to put my little drum here and roll it together. You should probably take your lid off first. I failed to do that. Then you can tuck in any of the extra at the top. And what we've done before, remember I have these dots and all kinds of things to decorate my drum. You can put dots. You can use your crayons and make different designs on yours, just like I might do a few of here. Oh, what's a good color? I kind of like this color. I can do squiggles and make all kinds of cute squiggles all over my drum. Or, as we've done every other time, goodness gracious, we've got stickers. So I can put stickers on. And by the time we finish, we have a very, very well-decorated drum. But you can do yours any way you'd like to do yours. Whatever you think looks good, you're right, it does. You can leave it plain if you want it just to say oatmeal. But there we go. I have, I think that's probably enough stickers. And since we cut our Mylar balloon, remember our Mylar balloon, since we cut that before, you're going to have extra left over. This is going to be really big. Just pull this down over top. Put your rubber bands. And remember how I said you can take this and pull it tight? Well, that leaves a lot of excess. So you can decide to cut yours shorter so that it's closer to the top. Let's see what we have. And we will have your drum finished in almost no time at all. So make sure there we go. There's our drum. Another drum complete just like that. And again, makes a great sound. So there. You can either, again, make your own drum. You can use a container and use the top as a drum top. Again, you'd probably rather decorate this than leave it the way it is. But that concludes today's craft of making drums. Thank you for joining me and the crazy hair kids once again as we completed this. I'm glad you've been able to join us this week and I hope we get to see each other again in the future. But before we leave, remember all of the different things we've made this week? Let's see if we can get them out. I'm going to clear a few things on my work table. And we will get out some of our instruments and let's see what kind of music we can make together. Remember we made, let's see, what do we have? We have our maracas. We've got our drum. We have our kazoo. What else? Ooh, remember the other maracas that we made? We've been busy this week making all sorts of things. <gasps> Can't forget our tambourine. So we've got our tambourine in here. And oh my gracious goodness, we've got our stringed instrument here. Whoops, I need to tune that just a little bit. You may need to tune yours. So you could sit around kinds of music with different things that we've managed to make during the course of this week. And again, I'd like to thank every single one of you for joining us. 
and have a wonderful summer making music together. Bye.